Section 10 of Happy Jack by Thornton W. Burgess. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jude Summers. Section 10. Happy Jack Finds a New Home. Farmer Brown's Boy Takes a Prisoner. And A Prisoner Without Fear. Chapter 18. Happy Jack Finds a New Home. They say the very darkest clouds are lined with silver bright and fair, though how they know I do not see, and neither do I really care. It's good to believe, and so I try, to believe tis true with all my might, that nothing is so seeming dark, but has a hidden side that's bright. Certainly things couldn't look much darker than they did to Happy Jack Squirrel, as he sat in the big maple tree at the side of farmer brown's house and saw jolly round red mr sun getting ready to go to bed behind the purple hills he was afraid to go to his home in the green forest because shadow the weasel might be waiting for him there he was afraid of the night which would soon come he was cold and he was hungry altogether he was as miserable a little squirrel as ever was seen. He had just made up his mind that he would have to go look for a hollow in one of the trees in the old orchard, in which to spend the night, when around the corner of the house came Farmer Brown's boy, with something under one arm and dragging a ladder. He whistled cheerily to Happy Jack as he put the ladder against the tree, and climbed up. By this time, Happy Jack had grown so timid that he was just a little afraid of Farmer Brown's boy. So he climbed as high up in the tree as he could get and watched what was going on below. Even if he was afraid, there was comfort in having Farmer Brown's boy near. For some time, Farmer Brown's boy worked busily at the place where the branch that Happy Jack knew so well started out from the trunk of the tree towards the window of Farmer Brown's boy's room. When he had fixed things to suit him, he went down the ladder and carried it away with him. In the crotch of the tree he had left the queer thing that he had brought under his arm. In spite of his fears, Happy Jack was curious. Little by little he crept nearer. What he saw was a box with a round hole just about big enough for him to go through in one end, and in front of it a little shelf. On the shelf were some of the nuts that he liked best. For a long time Happy Jack looked and looked. Was it a trap? Somehow he couldn't believe that it was. What would Farmer Brown's boy try to trap him for when they were such good friends? At last the sight of the nuts was too much for him. It certainly was safe enough to help himself to those. Oh, how good they tasted! Almost before he knew it, they were gone. Then he got up courage enough to peep inside. The box was filled with soft hay. It certainly did look inviting in there to a fellow who had no home and no place to go. He put his head inside. Finally he went wholly in. It was just as nice as it looked. I believe, thought Happy Jack, that he made this little house just for me, and that he put all this hay in here for my bed. He doesn't know much about making a bed, but I guess he means well. With that, he went to work happily to make up a bed to suit him, and by the time the first black shadow had crept as far as the big maple tree, Happy Jack was curled up fast asleep in his new house. Chapter 19 Farmer Brown's Boy Takes a Prisoner The craftiest and cleverest, the strongest and the bold, will make mistakes like other folks, young, middle-aged, and old. Happy Jack was happy once more. He liked his new house, the house that Farmer Brown's boy had made for him, and fastened in the big maple tree close by the house in which he himself lived. Happy Jack and Farmer Brown's boy were getting to be greater friends than ever. Every morning, Happy Jack jumped over to the window sill and then in at the open window of the room of Farmer Brown's boy. There, he was sure to find a good breakfast of fat hickory nuts. When Farmer Brown's boy overslept, 
as he did sometimes, Happy Jack would jump on the bed and waken him. He thought this great fun. So did Farmer Brown's boy, though sometimes when he was very sleepy, he pretended to scold, especially on Sunday mornings, when he did not have to get up as early as on other days. Of course, Black Pussy soon discovered that Happy Jack was living in the big maple tree and she spent a great deal of time sitting at the foot of it and glaring up at him with a hungry look in her eyes, although she wasn't hungry at all, for she had plenty to eat. Several times she climbed up in the tree and tried to catch him. At first he had been afraid, but he soon found out that Black Pussy was not at all at home in a tree as he was. After that he rather enjoyed having her try to catch him, it was almost like a game. It was great fun to scold at her and let her get very near him, and then, just as she was sure that she was going to catch him, to jump out of her reach. After a while, she was content to sit at the foot of the tree and just glare at him. Happy Jack had only one worry now, and this didn't trouble him a great deal. It was possible that Shadow the Weasel might take it into his head to try to surprise him some night. Happy Jack knew that by this time Shadow must know where he was living, for of course Sammy Jay had found out, and Sammy is one of those who tells all he knows. Still, being so close to Farmer Brown's boy gave Happy Jack a very comfortable feeling. Now, all this time, Farmer Brown's boy had not forgotten Shadow the Weasel and how he had driven Happy Jack out of the green forest, and he had wondered a great many times if it wouldn't be a kindness to the other little people if he should trap Shadow and put him out of the way. But you know, he had given up trapping, and somehow he didn't like to think of setting a trap, even for such a mischief-maker as Shadow. Then, Something happened that made Farmer Brown's boy very, very angry. One morning, when he went to feed the biddies, he found that Shadow had visited the hen house in the night and killed three of his best pullets. That decided him. He felt sure that Shadow would come again, and he meant to give Shadow a surprise. He hunted until he found the little hole through which Shadow had got into the hen house, and there he set a trap. I don't like to do it, but I've got to, said he. If he had been content with one, it would have been bad enough. But he killed three just from the love of killing, and it is high time that something be done to get rid of him. The very next morning, Happy Jack saw Farmer Brown's boy coming from the hen house with something under his arm. He came straight over to the foot of the big maple tree and put the thing he was carrying down on the ground. He whistled to Happy Jack, and as Happy Jack came down to see what it was all about, Farmer Brown's boy grinned. "'Here's a friend of yours you probably will be glad to see,' said he. At first, all Happy Jack could make out was a kind of wire box. Then he saw something white inside, and it moved. Very suspiciously, Happy Jack came nearer. Then his heart gave a great leap. That wire box was a cage, and glaring between the wires with red angry eyes was Shadow the Weasel. He was a prisoner. Right away, Happy Jack was so excited that he acted as if he were crazy. He no longer had a single thing to be afraid of. Do you wonder that he was excited? Chapter 30 A Prisoner Without Fear A bad name is easy to get, but hard to live down. Shadow the Weasel was a prisoner. He, who always had been free to go and come as he pleased, and to do as he pleased, was now in a little narrow cage and quite helpless. For once he had been careless, and this was the result. Farmer Brown's boy had caught him in a trap. Of course, he should have known better than to have visited the henhouse a second time after killing three of the best pullets there. He should have known that Farmer Brown's boy would be sure to do something about it. The truth is, he had yielded to temptation when common sense had warned him not to, so he had no one to blame for his present difficulty but himself, 
and he knew it. At first he had been in a terrible rage and had bitten at the wires until he had made his mouth sore. When he had made sure that the wires were stouter than his teeth, he wisely stopped trying to get out in that way and made up his mind that the only thing to do was to watch for a chance to slip out if the door of the cage should happen to be left unfastened. Of course, it hurt his pride terribly to be made fun of by those who had always feared him. Happy Jack Squirrel was the first one of these to see him. Farmer Brown's boy had put the cage down near the foot of the big maple tree in which Happy Jack was living because Shadow had driven him out of the green forest. As soon as Happy Jack had made sure that Shadow really and truly was a prisoner, and so quite harmless, he had acted as if he were crazy. Perhaps he was. Crazy with joy. You see, he no longer had anything to be afraid of, for there was no one but Shadow from whom he could not get away by running into his house. Billy Mink was the only other one who could follow him there, and Billy was not likely to come climbing up a tree so close to Farmer Brown's house. So Happy Jack raced up and down the tree in the very greatest excitement, and his tongue went quite as fast as his legs. He wanted everybody to know that Shadow was a prisoner at last. At first he did not dare go very close to the cage. You see, he had so long feared Shadow that he was still afraid of him, even though he was so helpless. But little by little, Happy Jack grew bolder and came very close. And then he began doing something not at all nice. He began calling Shadow names and making fun of him, telling him how he wasn't afraid of him. It was all very foolish, and worse, it was like hitting a foe who was helpless. Of course, Happy Jack hastened to tell everybody he met all about Shadow, and so it wasn't long before Shadow began to receive many visitors. Whenever Farmer Brown's boy was not around, there was sure to be one or more of the little people who had feared Shadow to taunt him and make fun of him. Somehow, it seems as if always it is that way when people get into trouble. You know, it is very easy to appear to be bold and brave when there is nothing to be afraid of. Of course, that isn't bravery at all, though many seem to think it is. Now, what do you think that right down in their hearts all these little people who came to jeer at Shadow the Weasel hoped they would see? Why, they hoped they would see Shadow afraid. Yes, sir, that is just what they hoped. But they didn't. That is where they were disappointed. Not once did Shadow show the least sign of fear. He didn't know what Farmer Brown's boy would do with him, and he had every reason to fear that if he was not to be kept a prisoner for the rest of his natural life, something dreadful would be the end. But he was too proud and too brave to let anyone know that any such fear ever entered his mind. Whatever his faults, Shadow is no coward. He boldly took bits of meat, which Farmer Brown's boy brought to him, and not once appeared in the least afraid, so that, much as he disliked him, Farmer Brown's boy actually had to admire him. He was a prisoner, but he kept just as stout a heart as ever. End of Section 10 Section 11 of Happy Jack by Thornton W. Burgess This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jude Summers Section 11 what Farmer Brown's boy did with Shadow, Happy Jack is perfectly happy, and Sammy Jay upsets Happy Jack. Chapter 31 What Farmer Brown's Boy Did with Shadow Ribble, dibble, dibble, dab. Some people have the gift of gab. Some people have no tongues at all to trip them up and make them fall. It is a fact one of the biggest facts in all the world, that tongues make the greatest part of all the trouble that brings uncomfortable feelings and bitterness and sadness and suffering and sorrow. 
if it wasn't for unruly, careless, mean tongues, the great world would be a million times better to live in, a million times happier. It is because of his unruly tongue that Sammy Jay is forever getting into trouble. It is the same way with Chatterer the Red Squirrel. And it is just the same way with a great many little boys and girls, and with grown-ups as well. When the little people of the Green Forest and Green Meadows, who fear Shadow the Weasel, found that he was a prisoner, many of them took particular pains to visit him when the way was clear, just to make fun of him and tease him, and tell him that they were not afraid of him, and that they were glad he was a prisoner, and that they were sure something dreadful would happen to him, and they hoped it would. Shadow said never a word in reply. He was too wise to do that. He just turned his back on them. But all the time he was storing up in his mind all these hateful things, and he meant, if ever he got free again, to make life very uncomfortable for those whose foolish tongues were trying to make him feel more miserable than he already felt. But these little people with the foolish tongues didn't stop to think what might happen. They just took for granted that Shadow never again would run wild and free in the green forest, and so they just let their tongues run and enjoyed doing it. Perhaps they wouldn't have if they had known just what was going on in the mind of Farmer Brown's boy. Ever since he had found Shadow in the trap which he had set for him in the hen house, Farmer Brown's boy had been puzzling over what he should do with his prisoner. At first he had thought he would keep him in a cage for the rest of his life. But somehow, whenever he looked into Shadow's fierce little eyes and saw how unafraid they looked, he got to thinking of how terrible it must be to be shut up in a little narrow cage when one has had all the green forest in which to go and come. Then he thought that he would kill Shadow and put him out of his misery at once. He killed my pullets, and he is always hunting the harmless little people of the green forest and the green meadows, so he deserves to be killed, thought Farmer Brown's boy. He's a pest. Then he remembered that after all Shadow was one of old Mother Nature's little people, and that he must serve some purpose in Mother Nature's great plan. Bad as he seemed, she must have some use for him. Perhaps it was to teach others through fear of him how to be smarter and take better care of themselves, and so be better fitted to do their parts. The more he thought of this, the harder it was for Farmer Brown's boy to make up his mind to kill him. But if he couldn't keep him a prisoner, and he couldn't kill him, what could he do? He was scowling down at Shadow one morning and puzzling over this, when a happy idea came to him. "'I know what I'll do,' he exclaimed. Without another word, he picked up the cage with Shadow in it and started off across the green meadows, which now, you know, were not green at all, but covered with snow. Happy Jack watched him out of sight. He had gone in the direction of the old pasture. He was gone a long time, and when he did return, the cage was empty. Happy Jack blinked at the empty cage. Then he began to ask in a scolding tone, "'What did you do with him? What did you do with him?' Farmer Brown's boy just smiled and tossed a nut to Happy Jack. And far up in the old pasture, Shadow the Weasel was once more free. It was well for Happy Jack's peace of mind that he didn't know that. Chapter 32 Happy Jack is perfectly happy. Never say a thing is so unless you absolutely know. Just remember every day to be quite sure of what you say. Taking things for granted doesn't do at all in this world. To take a thing for granted is to think that it is so without taking the trouble to find out whether it is or not. It is apt not only to get you yourself into trouble, but to make trouble for other people as well. Happy Jack saw Farmer Brown's boy carry Shadow the Weasel away in a cage, and he saw him bring back the cage empty. What could he have done with Shadow? 
for a while he teased Farmer Brown's boy to tell him. But, of course, Farmer Brown's boy didn't understand Happy Jack's language. Now, Happy Jack knew just what he would like to believe. He would like to believe that Farmer Brown's boy had taken Shadow away and made an end of him. And because he wanted to believe that, it wasn't very hard to believe it. There was the empty cage. Of course, Farmer Brown's boy wouldn't have gone to the trouble of trapping Shadow unless he intended to get rid of him for good. "'He's made an end of him, and that's what he's done,' said Happy Jack to himself, because that is what he would have done if he had been in Farmer Brown's boy's place. So, having made up his mind that this is what had been done with Shadow, he at once told all his friends that it was so, and was himself supremely happy. You see, he felt that he no longer had anything to worry about. Yes, sir, Happy Jack was happy. He liked the house Farmer Brown's boy had made for him in the big maple tree close by his own house. He was sure of plenty to eat, because Farmer Brown's boy always looked out for that. And as a result, Happy Jack was growing fat. None of his enemies of the green forest dared come so near to Farmer Brown's house, and the only one he had to watch out for at all was Black Pussy. By this time, he wasn't afraid of her, not a bit. In fact, he rather enjoyed teasing her and getting her to chase him. When she was dozing on the doorstep, he liked to steal very close, wake her with a sharp bark, and then run for the nearest tree, and there scold her to his heart's content. He had made friends with Mrs. Brown and with Farmer Brown, and he even felt almost friends with Bowser the Hound. Sometimes he would climb up on the roof of Bowser's little house and drop nutshells on Bowser's head when he was asleep. The funny thing was, Bowser never seemed to mind. He would lazily open his eyes and wink one of them at Happy Jack and thump his tail. He seemed to feel that now Happy Jack was one of the family, just as he was. So Happy Jack was just as happy as a fat gray squirrel with nothing to worry him could be. He was so happy that Sammy Jay actually became jealous. You know, Sammy is a born troublemaker. He visited Happy Jack every morning, and while he helped himself to the good things that he always found spread out for him, for Farmer Brown's boy always had something for the little feathered folks to eat, he would hint darkly that such goodness and kindness was not to be trusted, and that something was sure to happen. That is just the way with some folks. They always are suspicious. But nothing that Sammy Jay could say troubled Happy Jack, and Sammy would fly away quite put out because he couldn't spoil Happy Jack's happiness the least little bit. Chapter 33 Sammy Jay Upsets Happy Jack A good deed well done often is overlooked, but you never are allowed to forget a mistake. Sammy Jay chuckled as he flew across the snow-covered green meadows on his way to his home in the green forest. He chuckled and he chuckled. To have heard him, you would have thought that either he had thought of something very pleasant, or something very pleasant had happened to him. Once he turned in the direction of Farmer Brown's house, but changed his mind as he saw the black shadows creeping out from the purple hills, and once more headed for the green forest. "'Too late today. Time I was home now. It'll keep until tomorrow,' he muttered. Then he chuckled, and he was still chuckling when he reached the big hemlock tree, among the thick branches of which he spent each night. "'Don't know what started me off to the old pasture this afternoon, but I'm glad I went.' "'My, my, my, but I'm glad I went,' said he, as he fluffed out his feathers and prepared to tuck his head under his wing. "'It pays to snoop around in this world and see what is going on. I learned a long time ago not to believe everything I hear, and that the surest way to make sure of things is to find out for myself. Nothing like using my own eyes and my own ears. Well, I must get to sleep.' He began to chuckle again and he was still chuckling as he fell asleep. The next morning Sammy Jay was astir at the very first sign of light. 
he waited just long enough to see that every feather was in place, for Sammy is a bit vain and very particular about his dress. Then he headed straight for Farmer Brown's house. Just as he expected, he found Happy Jack Squirrel was awake, for Happy Jack is an early riser. <clears throat> Good morning, said Sammy Jay, and tried very hard to make his voice sound smooth and pleasant. A very hard thing for Sammy to do, for his voice, you know, is naturally harsh and unpleasant. You seem to be looking as happy as ever. Of course I am, replied Happy Jack. Why shouldn't I? I haven't a thing to worry about. Of course I'm happy, and I hope you're just as happy as I am. I'm going to go get my breakfast now, and then I'll be happier still. That's so. There's nothing like a good breakfast to make one happy, said Sammy Jay, helping himself to some suet tied to a branch of the maple tree. By the way, I saw an old friend of yours yesterday. He inquired after you particularly. He didn't send his love, but he said that he hoped you are well and fat as ever, and that he will see you again some time. He said that he didn't know of anyone he likes to look at better than you. Happy Jack looked flattered. That was nice of him, said he. Who was it? Guess, replied Sammy. Happy Jack scratched his head thoughtfully. There were not many friends in winter. Most of them were asleep or had gone to the far away Southland. Peter Rabbit, he ventured. Sammy shook his head. Jimmy Skunk. Again, Sammy shook his head. Jumper the Hare? Guess again, said Sammy, chuckling. Little Joe Otter. Wrong, replied Sammy. I give up. Who was it? Do tell me, begged Happy Jack. It was Shadow the Weasel, cried Sammy triumphantly. Happy Jack dropped the nut he was just going to eat, and in place of happiness something very like fear grew and grew in his eyes. I, I don't believe you, he stammered. Farmer Brown's boy took him away and put an end to him. I saw him take him. But you didn't see him put an end to Shadow, declared Sammy, because he didn't. He took him way up in the old pasture and let him go, and I saw him up there yesterday. That's what comes of guessing at things. Shadow is no more dead than you are. Well, I must be going along. I hope you enjoy your breakfast. With this, off flew Sammy Jay, chuckling as if he thought he had done a very smart thing in upsetting Happy Jack, which goes to show what queer ideas some people have. As for Happy Jack, he worried for a while, but as Shadow didn't come and there was nothing else to worry about, little by little Happy Jack's high spirits returned, until he was as happy as ever. And now, though he has had many adventures since then, I must leave him, for there is no more room in this book. Perhaps, if you ask him, he will tell you of these other adventures himself. Meanwhile, bashful little Mrs. Peter Rabbit is anxious that you should know something about her, so I have promised to call the next book Mrs. Peter Rabbit. End of Section 11 End of Happy Jack by Thornton W. Burgess